welcome to the Voice of Victory, streaming live from the campus of Victory Baptist Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. So as we prepare to hear today's message, please find your Bible, a notepad, and a pen or pencil. Now, let's join this morning's worship service already in progress.
standing find in your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 today, that'll be the focus of our time together in God's Word, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 this morning. We invite you to find that and uh, follow along. This is an important verse for us, it is an important truth for us, and I'm grateful that the choir set the stage for us this morning as they sang the song that Jesus is the cornerstone and He is indeed Uh, the very author of our salvation, and that's what we come to celebrate today. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, hear the word of the Lord for us today. For in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was entirely appropriate that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, that He should make the source of of their salvation perfect through suffering. May God add His richest blessing to the reading of His Word today. Thank you. Please be seated. There are many discussions today about salvation. What does it mean to be saved? Uh, How are we saved? What should we do to be saved? Well, the preacher of Hebrews here provides us, in a very few words, the full understanding of what it means, number one, to need salvation, number two, to have salvation, and number three, where that salvation comes from. And what he says to us here is that our salvation is the result of God acknowledging our need, a need that we cannot meet for ourselves, that we could not accomplish for ourselves. And salvation should never be discussed in these terms, my salvation. Biblically, the, the, the understanding of salvation is that it is God's salvation that He offers to us that we claim as, a, as His gift to us through faith and trust in who He is, what He has accomplished, and what He offers us as His gift to us. David in Psalm 51, as you've heard me say on a number of times, when he speaks to us about through his prayer of having what God has provided him restored, He prays, Lord, restore the joy of your salvation. He sees it, he understands it as God's gift to him. So important for us to recognize that today because there are a lot of folks that want want us to believe that we can do something, that we have within us the power to be saved. I want to say to all of us this morning that according to Scripture and according to this verse, we need to understand that it is only through the power of God's love expressed in His grace and mercy toward us through His Son, Jesus Christ, that salvation is even possible. Let us be reminded of that today. So here is what we hear, what we see, and what we read in this passage. For in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, this is what God has done. And here's what I want to remind us of. When we go back to the garden experience in Genesis chapter 3, after the disobedience that led to the separation, that led to the expression for the first time of man's sin through disobedience to the Lord, what did man do? Man understood immediately that he was separated from God as a result of his disobedience. And therefore, instead of running to God, For forgiveness, rather than running to God and saying, I'm sorry, rather than running to God and confessing his sin, rather than repenting of his sin, the scripture says that man ran and hid. Glory to God. God did not let it end there. Because what the scripture says to us is that God pursued the man. When man was hiding from God, God came to find him. Why? Not so that he might judge him 
although he was already judged as a result of his disobedience, but that he might express, express grace and mercy and set into motion for us the understanding of the redemption that God had planned before the foundation of the world for his most prized creation. So when we see this here, when, and, and as the preacher is helping us to understand what it means to be saved, we recognize that it is in God bringing many sons and daughters to glory. It's only God who is able to do that. What is he doing? He's doing for us that which only he can do. And what is he doing according to the scripture and according to the words of sal that, that are translated salvation here for us? It is a reminder to us that what God offers us is fullness, wholeness, renewal, and new life. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, as we've read before, that we were dead in our trespasses and sin, but as a result of God's love that he had for us, through Jesus Christ, he made us alive. We were dead, but he came looking for us, and he is the one who brings us to salvation. Therefore, we recognize that it is through Jesus' suffering, his suffering for us, that God's plan of redemption is revealed to us. God had sent his prophets, he had sent his preachers throughout the Old Testament period. They were proclaiming God's grace, God's mercy, God's redemption through the system that he had set up for them to follow. But all of the prophets were pointing to the day that Jesus would come. And when Jesus did come, his whole life was about the redemption of the Lord, redeeming you and me who place our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. So it is in Jesus' suffering that God accomplishes his plan of salvation. How am I brought? How did he bring me to his glory? He did so through Jesus' suffering on the cross. We also need to understand that the suffering here that is de de described for us was a suffering that is not talking just about the pain that he endured on the cross, but it is a reminder to us that he suffered death for you and me. The scripture says to us that he took our place. Sin causes death. Sin causes separation. Sin separates us from the holiness of God. It brings us into the judgment of God. But God looked to us, looked at us, saw our need, and he met our need as he sent Jesus. Therefore, Jesus did not suffer for his sin. He had no sin, but he suffered for your sin and my sin. And so it's amazing for us to understand and to recognize that when the scripture tells us and reveals to us all that God has done to bring us to his glory, to bring us into his presence. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the glory of God and how the glory of God truly represents for us and helps us to understand that it means we come into his presence. What a glorious truth that is. Isn't it interesting that when we come to a place where we acknowledge, when we hear the gospel and we recognize that we are separated from God as a result of our disobedience, which is, which is a full expression and expression of our sin, then we begin to understand that we are separated from him and we're afraid to come into his presence. But the wonderful thing about the gospel and the wonderful thing about Jesus' suffering is he comes and he ushers us into the presence of Almighty God. Here the understanding is he brings us in. Well, listen, we need to show, be shown the way, right? Remember when Jesus spoke in John 14, they, the disciple says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to enter into heaven? There's only one way into heaven. That's through Jesus. Only one way. So it's through his suffering that we have received this entrance. We are brought into the presence of God. Why? Because he took my place when he died on the cross. What I should have suffered, Jesus suffered for me so that I might be brought into a right relationship with him. So who is the author of my salvation? Who is the author of our salvation? The salvation that God provides us, that gives to us, that is his gift to us, it is Jesus. Do you remember the last words of Jesus on the cross? What did he say? 
It is finished, right? It is finished. When Jesus died on the cross, he finished the work that was necessary. He is the author of our salvation. The word here, author, means and can be used to be a guide. It can be translated trailblazer. What it really means is that Jesus came to rescue us. When we were drowning, when we were being buried in our sin, Jesus came, took us by the hand, and he saved us. He is the Savior, our Savior. He is the author of our salvation. There is no salvation except in Jesus. Do we understand that? I know that there are a lot of teachings out there and there are a lot of folks that think that we can do something to save ourselves. I just want you to know from a biblical perspective that the only thing that is going to make your relationship with God what it must be for you to receive life that is new, life that is abundant, and life that is eternal. The only way you're going to receive that is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because He is the author, as the choir sang this morning, of our salvation. There is no other. Can I say this to you? There is no other plan. There is no other plan. You say, well, that's pretty narrow. Well, listen. When you consider what the prize is, and I hate to use that word, but when you consider what the what the gift is, you'd you'd do anything to have that gift, wouldn't you? Then why not trust God and say, He is the author of salvation. There is no other salvation except in Him and through Him. So important for us. Because here's what we know as we prepare our hearts now to celebrate at the Lord's table, and that it is through Jesus' suffering That redemption, my redemption, your redemption is complete. What is it that he says here? Here's how God provided this for us. He made the source of our salvation perfect through suffering. Can I say to you, when you read that word perfect, what does that mean? It means that it is the only way. Can you get any better than perfect? No. Right? And so here is what God is saying to us. There is only one way, and it is the perfect way, because God has offered it to you and to me. And today we remember that. And in just a moment... You will hold in your hand the elements that remind us that Jesus suffered for us. He died for us. And we come to remember that. And can I say to all of us this morning that I wish that we were able to remember that every moment of every day as we allow thoughts to pass through our mind, as we allow words to pass over our lips, and as we allow our hands to do things that oftentimes and sometimes do not represent the full measure of who we have been declared to be as a result of his salvation that he has imputed to us and imparted to us. It's perfect. It's complete. It's not Jesus plus. It's Jesus only. Perfect. And you know what that means? That means that God didn't make a mistake when He spoke into your heart through the Holy Spirit drawing you to Himself. Now, as we prepare our hearts to be reminded again that Jesus suffered for us as we hold these elements that are symbols of His suffering for us. Take just a moment as the men come to prepare the table, to prepare your heart to receive today 
that which reminds us of his perfect gift for us. You'll be reminded this morning that on that night before Jesus was crucified, that he met with the twelve. It was a time of celebration. It was a time of remembering that God had made a promise. And as Jesus met with those men around that table, as they celebrated the promise that God had made, the scripture says that he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he called attention to it and he said these words, This is my body, which is broken for you. Today, as we look at this loaf of bread, which is different than the one that he would have used, because it was unleavened bread in those days, but this provides for us an image. It is one loaf, and there is one Lord, there is one salvation, there is one plan, there is one perfect way, the only way. And that's Jesus. But the bread, the loaf, also reminds us that as a result of Jesus Christ coming into our lives, saving us, redeeming us, rescuing us, we become a member of one body. We are one body. The bread is very symbolic for us. Not only his death, but also the life that is in the church. One body. One body. We are one in Him. Amen? Amen. And the Scripture says that He blessed it, and He broke it, and He shared it with those around the table. We bless the bread as we remember what He has done for us this day. Father, it is great with grateful hearts that we're here today. We thank you, Father, that we have the freedom to be here. We thank you for the many, many that have died to give us our freedom. But most of all, Father, we thank you for the remembrance of the Lord's Supper that you gave us so that we could remember what you did for us on the cross. Father, we we thank you for that and we pray that each one of us here this morning that we all can ask your forgiveness for every sin that we've committed so that we can come to you honorably, Father, and break this bread. We pray that you would bless this bread that symbolizes your body that was broken for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus said, take and eat. On that night, it was then that Jesus took a cup, one cup, our unity, the perfect way. And he said these words, this cup is the cup of the new covenant. This seals for you the promise of God that he will never break. It reminds us that we are one in him and that we are to be one to the world as we represent Christ. And so today we give praise to the Father for the gift, the perfect gift made perfect through Jesus shedding His blood for me, for you. We praise Him today. Most precious Heavenly Father, as we come to partake of this cup that represents the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the new covenant, Father, that through that blood that covers us, we have eternal life. Father, thank you so much, and thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were willing to go to the cross and suffer and bleed that we might have the opportunity to accept you. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love the Father so much and that you loved us, that you would suffer and die and shed your blood for us. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus said, take and drink. And all God's people said, Amen. sing this little chorus. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Are you grateful for what God has done for you? Then there's only one question. Have you, by faith, embraced Jesus as your Savior? We extend that invitation to you now. It's the invitation that Jesus gave everywhere he spoke. Come, come, find rest for your soul. Every word he spoke pointed to the Father, to the gift of salvation that is the Father's to us. It is an appeal that is sufficient for all of the sin of all of the world, but it is very specific. Only those who are willing to embrace Jesus as Savior have the right to the authority to become the children of God. God, through Jesus, was bringing you and bringing me to be his son or his daughter. Are you? If not, I want to invite you to come this morning. And maybe as a son or a daughter of the Lord today, the invitation that you receive is an invitation from the Holy Spirit guiding you to unite with this fellowship, to join with them, the, those of us that are a part of this fellowship, to go into this community to be His light, His hope, as we share His Word with those around us. And we invite you to come. Maybe as a son or a daughter this morning, the burden that you're carrying is heavy, and you would come and one of these men who will line the altar this morning would be here to pray with you and to allow you to express that concern as they pray for you. As we stand this morning, no singing, just the instruments playing. We extend this invitation to you. You come to the Lord Jesus. Come to unite with his fellowship here at Victory. Come and be prayed for this morning in these moments of decision. Would you come right now? You come as the instruments play. Come right now.
Heavenly Father, you know each of our hearts today, and I pray that our hearts have been open to you, that our minds have been receptive to the word of truth that comes to us through your living word. Lord, speak into us that we might be all that you have called us and have declared us to be in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the Lord Jesus who died and suffered my death that I might have life that is new and abundant here and now and eternal in the days to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. We praise your holy name. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Bible study will begin in just a few moments. Take a moment and fellowship with those around you as you make your way to Bible study this morning. God bless you. We hope you found this week's message a blessing in your walk with Christ. We would like to extend a personal invitation for you to join us for worship this week at our Victory Baptist campus. To learn more about our scheduled worship times and activities at Victory Baptist, please visit us online at vbcmtj.org. That's vbcmtj.org. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we invite you to be here at the same time next week for the Voice of Victory. Victory.